Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us in the ProGate Learning Jam today. Um, I am Aditya Obrai, the host for this event. Um, as noticed in the recent years, JavaScript has truly taken the tech world by storm, ranging in its applications in a variety of fields from web development to application development and even embedded systems now, there are truly very few languages as versatile as JavaScript. In order to help budding coders to, uh, begin their journey as independent developers, we are organizing this ProGate Learning Jam on JavaScript Fundamentals today. In this Learning Jam, we are joined by Ms. Simran Makija, the Girlstrip Indore chapter lead, as well as a very highly accomplished Microsoft student partner. Welcome, Simran. Thank you so much for those um, overtly kind words, I must say. I'm not uh, as accomplished as you asked me say myself to be. Hey, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining here today. This is uh, this is an introduction, introductory session to JavaScript uh, as used in the web development uh, environment mainly. We'll be uh, going through the base, we'll be introducing to JavaScript and running through the applications of JavaScript first, and then we'll be moving forward to a hands on session where you get to learn how to add JavaScript to your web page. So, uh, this is the first time that I'm doing a live online session so any suggestions any feedback all of that is much appreciated and yeah thanks a lot for joining let's begin me a second Can you see my screen? Yeah, it should be visible now. Sure. Um, so starting off, I hope everyone's having a good day and uh, been keeping safe, staying home and yeah, doing well. So let's start what, with what JavaScript is. JavaScript is a scripting or programming language that allows you to implement complex features on web pages. I mean, this is the MDN definition. I, I picked it up from MDN and pasted it here. This isn't much per se. But uh, what this means is that JavaScript is a language in which you write all the logic behind your web pages. Like even on the YouTube page, if you can click the like button right now and it pops up and changes the number of likes up there, that's probably JavaScript behind the scenes. Anything that a web page is doing, uh, aside from just sitting there and looking pretty, is JavaScript at work. So that seems really awesome, doesn't it? Like one programming language where we write maybe a single uh, file of script and that makes that literally blows the life into your uh, web applications simple web applications at least so yeah why why are we here why are we discussing javascript right now as aditya said in the beginning that javascript has been taking uh, in the recent years has taken the world by a storm in a certain sense it's one of the most popular languages on github and all over as well. So why JavaScript is, uh, if we talk in terms of exam questions, that's a 10 mark question. It will take some time to answer. I'll try to go through that really quickly. So we use JavaScript for front-end development. You can use plain JavaScript for front-end development as well as we'll be doing in this session. Also, there are a number of frameworks that work uh, that you can code in using JavaScript and that are essentially written using JavaScript. Uh, Angular is one of those frameworks. It uh, Angular JS is based on JavaScript, while Angular two and onwards, which we uh, which we refer to as Angular presently, is a framework that you write in using TypeScript, which is you could say a language that it has been derived from JavaScript, it has a little additional feature. So knowing JavaScript makes it easier to work with TypeScript as well. And then there's the, and Angular is a Google backed framework. This is something that Google built. Then moving on to React.js, which is sort of the hot topic in the last uh, two or so years, it's just burst up and uh, 
everybody is using it what is react js react js some might mistaken it to be a framework but react is a library it is uh, again backed by a tech giant made by facebook backed by facebook react js also enables you to work on the front end of things uh, a difference between these two a very slight one very quickly is that uh, angular is more uh, strict as to how things work in it and react is more flexible react is easier to learn a lot might say i i was introduced to angular earlier so i find angular equally easy i suppose and then we've got vue js which is the third thing on the screen that you can see right now this is what a lot of people call the best of both worlds it is the best of what react has to offer and what angular has to what offer put together so moving forward when you're done with your basics of javascript and you're building beautiful applications using just plain javascript and you want to build single page applications or uh, you know multi functionality applications these are one of three of the most powerful frameworks or libraries that you'll go to to learn uh, web development front end web to be used oh what um there's a slight um there's some mic issues can you just check your net connection once or try turning off your camera yeah i'll just do that just give me a second Yeah. Two would be. Ah, yeah. mm. uh, does my mic work better? Yeah. Yeah. Must be my internet. Sorry. No worries. So yeah, JavaScript can also be used for backend development, and uh, Node J. S has to be the um Simran, it, the oh. issue is still persisting. Or can you just try switching to a different connection? Is it better now? um yeah i think it's better now okay. yeah i think we can move ahead now I I'm trying to switch to a different connection. Just give me a moment. Okay, cool, cool. better now uh can you hear me yeah am i audible yeah it's much better now um can you just reshare your screen once I think Yashraj is also active in the chat now. Hi, Yashraj. Um, yeah. Um, has you have you shared your display? I can't seem to.
Simran, your screen, I think it's not showing up. Can you just share it once again? Let's try that once. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're audible now. Can you just um, share your... I'd be good not hearing back, but like I'd need to know if I am audible. So if yeah. if somebody in the comments can let me know, otherwise, if I'm audible, that would do too. You're audible, you're audible. All right, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Yeah. All right, so your display is visible now. Yeah. I think this. Um... So I'm really sorry. Apologies for my network connection issues and some issues with my laptop's audio that I have been facing since before the stream. So um, moving forward, I think JavaScript can also be used for backend development with Node.js. And these seem to be very uh, obvious applications of JavaScript, right? It is known to be the language of the web. So if it wasn't used for web, what would it be used for? Well, I have a few surprises coming. There's a little more. JavaScript is also used for mobile app development. And no, I'm not kidding. You do not need to know Swift, Objective-C, Java, or Kotlin to be able to build mobile applications. You can build them using Ionic, which is basically deploying a, a web application to your, um, to your mobiles which is uh, which makes a hybrid app that's what it's called ionic makes hybrid applications which do not use the native capabilities of a mobile phone as much so if you really want to be able to use the capabilities of your mobile the native features of it you could go and go with react native and uh, native script which are both uh, frameworks which you can use to build applications for the mobile written in JS. What they do is uh, they transpile your code to the native application. So uh, transpile means translate and compile. So what happens is the usage of the features is uh, transpiled into your um, native logic while the logic of your application, the base logic remains in JavaScript. So JavaScript en enables you to not just write web applications, but also mobile applications. And application tak to theek hai. This is fine. And that should be it, right? It isn't yet. That's why I called it a 10 mark question. Yahan tak to shayad 5 marks bhi nahi milte. JavaScript can also be used for uh, desktop applications. Desktop applications are apps that you use on your desktop. And how do we do that? Well, I've just put in the logo of Electron.js here. Electron.js helps us port our web applications to desktop applications. And moving forward, JavaScript can also be used for machine learning. No, I'm not kidding. TensorFlow does not require any introduction and the other little icon we here have here is of brain.js both both these uh, are libraries of uh, machine learning algorithms or machine learning models that you can find that are written in js so can be technically used in js as well really looks like there isn't something that js can't do doesn't it and this is something very interesting that i came across while i was preparing for this session uh, JS is now used in microcontrollers and IoT devices and embedded systems as well, which was not something I wanted to go into because I don't know much about them. But Bangle JS just seemed like something that shouldn't go unmentioned, you know. 
So Bangle JS is this smart watch, if you would like to call it, which is completely written in JS. Like you can write your logic for this uh, for this uh, particular. Okay. Uh, you can write your uh, logic for any application that you want to run on uh, this watch and connect it via Bluetooth to your de uh, to your um, device, your microcontroller or whatever. And you can actually test it out on this. And I mean, the creators of this watch must have loved JavaScript enough to include bangle.js in the name. This is a really cool thing that everybody should go and check out, right? Just uh, search bangle.js and look through. This was really cool. I felt like I couldn't go through this presentation without including this. So what are we up to today? Well, I said in the beginning that we'd be building a very basic application using JavaScript. So that's what we're essentially going to be doing uh, moving forward. The application that we're building is a small little color guessing game, you know, which looks like this and I've got it pulled up on my browser. I'm just going to show you what it does. Uh, give me a second. So the color game essentially is, it gives you, um, it's called the great RGB color game and it uh, gives you the RGB for a given color and you're supposed to guess which out of these six tiles or we've got two modes in the game or which out of these three tiles is that color. And uh, if you guess the wrong color, the color disappears and it says try again. And if you guess the right color, Ta da correct. And then you can play again as well. This is pretty simple looking and nice, but it's good for a start, I believe. So let's get started. Um, there is, you can find the HTML and CSS code for this application on my GitHub. Um, I'll just uh, share the link to it in a second so that if you want to follow along, you can. Yeah, the link will be shared to you in the description as well, I suppose, or that they must be doing that. So, um, Yeah, we'll, we'll mostly be adding the JS, the logic side of things here. So the first thing that we do whenever we start uh, adding logic to an application where we have HTML and CSS, while adding CSS, we make sure that we've already got classes and IDs for our elements. So the first thing that we do is we declare our variables where uh, most of them are us selecting elements from the from our markup. So we start with we start with uh, some three variables that we'll be using uh, moving forward to monitor things in our application, and then we have uh, we okay. So what var does in JavaScript is I will be con uh, considering that I have to explain a little bit of technicalities of JavaScript as well. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a fundamental session, right? So what uh, the keyword var means is that we're declaring a variable. And in ES6, we've also got let. So there is var and there's let. And well, the question, what is the difference between var and let? I'm going to let that be a homework. Go find out. There is a very specific difference, which you can find out either by, you know, the easiest way, putting putting that into a search bar and finding it out. Or you can go ahead, write your own code, put var somewhere, put let somewhere, and try and figure out what's happening. So, um, yeah, var essentially declares a variable here. And uh, JavaScript is not a strongly typed language, so you do not have to mention the type of your variable to start with. So... Uh, we declare the number of squares that we want to have on screen. Since we have two modes, we have the easy mode and the hard mode. So we'll have three squares at a certain time and six squares at others. Initially, we declared the number of squares that we're going to be having to be six. And we'll see how we change modes in a few seconds. 
we declare the colors array starting off to be an empty array and we have we've declared the picked color as well now moving to the fourth line we've got var squares equals document dot query selector all and then we have in bra in brackets dot square so what here it means is that uh, if you look at the html file which i'll be pulling up in just a second if you look at the html file here we've got six uh, classes six div divisions in our main container with the class square so here i mentioned the class as square and we all know that uh, not assuming we all know but uh, the css selector for a class goes with dot dot and then the class name so what we do here is the document that we refer to is our entire html document from where we use the query selector all function which returns all elements that are that have that match our query so this all elements of the class square will be fetched and put into an array by this particular line of code and that array will be called squares moving forward we have um, the color display which is essentially in our application this part this part of the screen is the color display which we select using get element by id the difference between an id and a class in html is that a class can have multiple member elements while an id can have only one member element so using get element by id returns to us the only element which has the id color display now we use queries we have used query selector all the method query selector all the get element by id method and the query selector method so next up is the query selector method so the message display that is mentioned here in this line the message display and here again if you'll see we're using an octothorpe or a hashtag as we'd call it uh, to start our uh, to enter the query into our query selector what the query selector does as opposed to what the query selector all does is that the uh, method query selector helps us fetch the first instance of the query provided so if i had done document dot query selector dot square i had got i would have gotten the first square while query selector all returned to me the array of squares that i had so here the octothorpe or the hashtag as the norm, as as our generation or as people would say denotes that here we are fetching it by id the id of our element is message and the message essentially on our screen is this bit which says correct right now and when i go play again and say select the wrong wrong color it says try again right so that is the message the h1 yes in so basically what we enter into the query selector or query selector all arguments is are the h uh, the css selectors for the given element so here h1 without an octothorpe or a dot or a period says that this is just one element that we are picking off of there uh similarly we have selected the mode buttons which are the easy and hard buttons and the reset button which we've got here which oh wait which we've got here which says new colors so it resets the colors and yeah so that is the declaration and the initialization of all the variables that we'll be using throughout this application next up we've got the generation of random colors which we'll be doing um using a function an inbuilt function in javascript called the math.random function which if you're familiar with uh, uh, with programming earlier it's basically the random number generator which has different names in, on different uh, in different languages which just generates a random number between 0 and 1 and then uh, yeah a random number between 0 and 1 and what we do here is because rgb values can be between 0 to 256 we uh, multiply the number that we get to 256 uh, 
we're talking 256 non inclusive so it's 0 to 255 if you want both inclusive and we select a number between we use matlot random to generate a number between 0 to 1 we multiply it with 256 to get an rgb value and we because this is not an integer value and our rgb values need to be integral we use the function math.floor which you should, which you works like the mod function that we use in uh, I shouldn't call it mod, the absolute function that we use in mathematics. So uh, math.floor essentially gives us the floor value of the decimal that we've generated. We do uh, pick random color. Uh, we pick a random color using the random color function, which is um, essentially this function. Yeah. So here we declare three variables, R, G, and B, which will be our RGB values. RGB values are basically uh, the colors are used. We use RGB values, hex values. These are the two kinds of values which are most generally used to name colors while doing CSS or anything else. So uh, we're using the RGB notation here so that we can display the three numbers we've got in our um, the great RGB game title as well, which helps us guess the color. So um, we declare three variables called R, G, and B, and we return a string which has their values all concatenated. We'll be doing that in just a second. So first, the first thing that we will do, we'll have um, declare a variable with the name R, and we'll take, we'll be using the math, dot random function which will be multiplying 256 to get our value which will be between 0 and 256 but this will be a decimal value so we'll be applying the math dot floor function to this to get an integral value between 0 to 256 256 non-inclusive similarly we'll be declaring G and this is what we call laziness. This is what you do when you don't want to write the entire thing. And B. This function will return a random generated color, but in the format that we can put it, uh, put add it to the colors of our squares, a format that a format that CSS would accept. So then we've got R and the RGB values in CSS have got to be comma separated. So we'll be adding a comma here and G and Oh, I guess. Oh, I forgot a plus. String concatenation in um, JavaScript is done using, uh, like, we just write the string in double quotes and then we uh, have a plus between each of the strings. Also, the since it's not strongly typed, the type conversion is done on its own. We do not have to worry about that. Oh, I forgot the plus again. There we go. So this function returns a random color, but we've got to generate a certain number of random colors for our color palette that we're supposed to be showing. Here we've got six random colors, or if we move to easy, ooh, that was just a guess. I wasn't even looking at the RGB values. If we move to easy, then we've got three colors that we've got to generate from. So this time, I did look at the RGB values and I made a guess. So it isn't always this easy, a chance of luck, I suppose. So where do we use this uh, random color function? What we do is we generate an array of colors and we push them into the array using the random color function. And then we, we generate a uh, we, the generate random colors function takes an argument called num, wherein we uh, 
we we've got to know the number of colors we have to generate right because we have uh, a three color mode and a six color mode so we have here what we'll do is we'll be initial initializing an array um assuming you know what an array is i was speaking up until now but i'm going to backtrack a little bit and explain what an array is an array is a collection of quantities a collection of elements in javascript an array does not need to have um the elements of the same type an array in javascript can have elements like i can i can declare an array that has an integer 1 a double 2.0 and a string k hey. and when if i try to run this code i'll have no issues javascript arrays do not have to be homogeneous but here we'll be creating an array of colors so uh, i just initialized an empty array this is how easy it is in javascript all you've got to do is var and the name can be anything it could be color array name doesn't matter i'm naming it arr so var arr uh, name of the array and then empty square brackets and we're done so what we'll do is we'll be using a for loop where um what am i doing wrong oh okay i am somebody that is used to various languages it looks like i used an int instead of a var so we do not explicitly define types anywhere in javascript which is one of the best things about it as i said before so uh, what a for loop looks like what a for loop does is it it iterates uh, a certain number of times so uh, uh, a for loop is a loop which does a certain action a certain number of times given a given condition is true so what happens in a for loop is we declare we can declare a variable inside the for loop which is here like i have done or i could have written var i here and then initialized it to be zero here both would have done so i declare a variable and i initialize it which is essentially my loop variable this loop will be executed it has some code here this code will be executed up until this condition remains true which is i is less than num because uh, i need num number of colors in my color array so that i i have that many numbers of squares that many number of random colors generated so num is the argument that was passed here and what does it have to do after each iteration so the third argument that we the third statement that we have here is i plus plus so the variable that we use for the um, for the for loop here the loop variable i has to increment by 1 every time the sum code here is executed so what we do here is that why why is it less than num and not less than equal to num is because we we starting from zero so when i is zero we're going to execute the entire code once and then we'll come back to this point where we have uh, i less than num and we'll be checking this condition and then incrementing it by one so if i do it i less than equal to num what will happen is i'll have one extra element in my array so what am i supposed to do here i'm supposed to push to the array and push is an inbuilt method or function if you will in javascript which helps us push elements to the end of an array i could do var i indexing uh, arr i indexing as well but this is more efficient it makes sure that I, that it is pushed to the end of the array i could have i could have done uh, i equal to 0 i less than num into 2 and i plus equal to 2 and still i'll i'd have uh, the same number of elements in my array because the number of iterations would have remained the same and uh, my loop variable i would have not been in the picture while i was indexing the array so i, I i'll be using the array dot push method anyway you yeah. know 
so yeah array dot push random hello and here we'll return this array of random colors and you must be wondering we've generated a random color we've returned the array of random colors but what are we going to do with these random colors essentially we're just putting them onto our squares how do i do that i did select the squares up there a few minutes ago right i'll be showing that in just a second let me yeah i think i'm good so far so i don't even feel like going back to the slides but the slides will be available on the github repository in a bit so you'll be able to reference the slides as well if you if you have to go through these steps again along with the code so you know what steps we following pick color this uh, so we have picked a uh, we've picked six random colors or six random three random colors and we've gotten them on our squares let's just assume we have them on our squares we don't yet but we need to find that one color that's supposed to be in our heading right so that one color that's supposed to be in our heading the color that chooses if you win or not is we're supposed to pick it again randomly out of those six colors because we don't want to hard code anything if we pick one color and if it's not a part of our you know like maybe the second color wins every time there's no fun in the game so what we do with the pick color uh, method is again we have um a random color uh, we to we pick up a random number from the number of colors that we've got and we we uh, we we pick our random mm -hmm. color between 0 to 1 again as we do most i'm so sorry about these notifications yeah sorry um so we pick a random color between 0 to 1 using math.random and then we multiply it with the length of our colors array to make sure that we have a number between 0 to the number of colors we've got and we do the math.floor function because again the index on an array cannot be a decimal value and then we choose that to be the picked color i'm going to write the code for this once just because got it here so var random which is the variable name is literally random because i'm going to be okay colors dot blend and will be returning colors random where where did we even see the colors array you know like i've, I've just been like there's a colors array so what the array that this function here returns we store it in this array that we had declared earlier while initializing our application which we'll be doing when we set up the squares which i suppose is the next step here so yeah we're setting up the squares and their click listeners so uh setting up the squares what click listeners do is what click listeners do is um click listeners are essentially event listeners are like uh, i'm on this website which looks like a pp uh, a powerpoint screen essentially and i click here and this click leads to something changing or i hover on wait let me try and hover on something yeah i hover on always used subtitles and it does so it it shows something so these are events occurring on our these are events that are occurring on our screens on our uh, on the web page when we go to an element and maybe we click on the element we hover over the element and something happens so what we do is 
to for that something to happen behind the scenes we have event listeners in javascript here what we're doing is we're adding an event listener to each individual square what happens is and we could do it in two ways actually we could do uh, squares i dot on click or we could do add event listener and click we use the add event listener yes so here we are yeah we use the add event listener method here because it is the it is a more generic method and a method that will be using over and over again on different events uh, not in this application here all we do is things change on click not much so uh, add event listener the method takes two arguments the first one being the type of event that we wanted to listen to and the function that should be performed once the event has occurred now here i have just uh, declared and declared and defined the entire function on uh, on here inside the event listener method you could also define your function elsewhere and put in the name of the function here instead so what the function here does is uh, the clicked color is the color of the event okay so the this keyword here in this instance oh my god that's the reason that this keyword is very controversial because i say the this keyword in this instance that's just so any which way the this keyword here uh in when we add an event listener to a given element refers to the element being selected from your uh, markup so uh, what we are doing is we are we are referencing to the background color as the clicked color and we have the picked color that we picked using pick color right so we've got the clicked color which we go by this which is the element on which the click is happening style is an attribute of the element and then there's the background color and we check if the clicked color is equal to the picked color um, we say we have won the game basically, basically right we've guessed the right color so what we do is the message display that we've got here i'm going to try and guess okay i have it says correct and the reset button says play again and all of this changes so all of this has to be done while we click on it so we change the message display here we selected the message display using the query selector method and the reset button uh, using the query selector method so those we reference to here and we use the property of an html element known as text content which refers to the content the content of the text or the text that is in that element and we set it to be correct we set our message display to be correct and we set our reset button display to be play again and we've got to change the color of all the squares right what happens here when i click on the right color because i have one and i'm not going to risk doing well let me play again and show yeah so it is 21 red 83 green support what's green and blue ooh correct guess yeah so uh, whenever i do that it changes the color of the remaining squares to be that color and also of the top panel to be that color right so i'm supposed to do that here for that i have the change colors function what this function does is it loops through all the squares and it changes their background color to be the color that we pass into it so we pass into it the clicked color if you'll notice here yeah and we selected the h1 the heading on our uh, page separately so we'll be changing the background for the h1 tag as well to the clicked color if the click color is not the color that we had picked not the correct color then what you do is you change the background for that particular clicked element to be the same 
as the background of the entire screen. So essentially, when we select a wrong color, I have to play again. If we select a wrong color, it disappears. It doesn't actually disappear. It's right there, but it has blended into the background because it is the same color as the background. So that's what we're doing here. And the message display changes to try again. That's what's happening if the color that we click on is not the picked color. I really like how this sounds, you know, clicked color, picked color, clicked color. Picked. I'm going to stop. Yeah. So this is what we had on this line there. Yes. Yeah. So this, this is all about setting up an event listener or a click listener in this uh, particular instance. And I've already explained how we change the color of all squares. We loop over the squares in the square uh, squares array that we had declared here by getting all the queries with the class square. So we loop over all the squares that we've got and we change their background color to be the said color in this step if the clicked color and the picked color are the same. Then We've got two modes. So now we know how the clicking of the colors works. Um, maybe before this, we could look um, we could look into the initialization of the game because uh, we've seen how we pick colors, how we generate colors, how we apply them to all our squares, but we haven't actually seen how all of this appears on our screen, right? So, oh, I see. What we do when uh, our uh, application first initializes is uh, we have we've over we've written the init function that we run first thing here. The init function calls the set mode buttons function, and you know, that's why we've got it here. So, but the recent the reset function is the function that actually does the entire setup of the things. What it does is it first generates all the random colors using the generate random colors method, which returns an array of uh, colors, which then we <clears throat> which then we pass to the colors array, the main colors array in the global scope, and then we pick a color out of the uh, array using the pick color method, and we assign that color to the picked color, and then we change the text content of our color display, the RGB bit that we've got. RGB, and then in the brackets we have, in the heading, we've got the num the colors, the RGB values of the picked color. We set that to be the picked color, and we set our reset button to be new colors, and the message display to be nothing. And then we loop over all the squares that we've got, and if we have, okay, we have six squares directly on our markup. We don't actually have uh, six squares on our screen at all times. So what we do is if we are in the easy mode and we have say three three colors in the colors array. So if, the, if there's not, the colors array does not have the ith element, which we check here, we set the display to be none which hides the other three. The display attribute is again a style attribute or a CSS attribute. And if we've got the colors present in our colors array, we set the background of the given square to be that color. And we, we have the general background of our H1 or our heading to be this blue, which is steel blue. This is a very close one, actually. They're both green and there's a high green content, a high blue content, maybe it's this. Yes, it's this, so yeah. This is how we initialize our array, our screen, by initializing our colors array, by initializing our picked color, by making sure we've got the correct uh, color displayed on our heading and we've got this color correct text on our reset button, we've got the correct display on our message box, and then setting the color for everything, the background color for all our squares, the background color for our heading. And also in the reset button, we add an event, event listener, 
we'll do that outside yeah uh, for the reset button here we've got an event listener which essentially triggers the re, uh, the reset function and all of those things are done all over again so we trigger the reset function twice once when we click on the reset button and also when we initialize so if i reload yeah the reset uh, the reset function is called all over again now let's go to setting up modes to set up modes the only thing that we have actually got to select is uh, we have got to do is make uh, check which button we have selected the easy or the hard button and to change the num squares value that we've gotten to be either 3 or 6 <coughs> excuse me so uh, the num squares value can either be 3 or 6 so um if we're in the easy mode we've got 3 squares and if we're in the tough mode we've got the hard mode we've got 6 squares and then we run the reset function again here to make sure that we have the correct number of squares on our screen so what the mode buttons uh, does is it um the setup mode button function does is it loops over both the mode buttons we could also have like a, a third mode which was like the intermediate mode where we had say five colors and we could set num squares to be five and it would work just the same right so the number of mode buttons could be more than just two so we loop over all the mode buttons and add event listeners to the mode buttons the event listeners again here are the click event listener which is the only event listener we use all over here we have other events as well where we can have hover over on mouse over on mouse enter on mouse leave there's a lot of those but here we're using the click event what happens if we click on any of the mode buttons is so uh, for every element in our html a markup we've got a class list a class list is essentially the list of classes that are associated with this element of our dom this dom element has these uh, has the selected class or the the mode button class for that matter that's how we select the mode buttons right we've got the mode button class and we do the query selector all uh, thing so here in the class list from the mode buttons we remove from both the mode buttons we remove the selected class what the selected class does is as you can see here it highlights which mode you're on right like it changes the background to be blue and this is an on mouse enter and on mouse leave by the way yeah so and uh, this um uh, this is the background goes blue and the text becomes white that is what the selected class does so we remove the selected class first from both uh, both our buttons and then this again refers to the element that was clicked the event occurred on this element so we use the this keyword and us element on that element we add to the class list of that element we add the class selected and we change the text content of our selected what of our selected button to be um if okay no what am i saying uh what this is here is we're in the setting mode up yeah so this is what we call the ternary operator what it does is it checks for the text of the element that we have selected if the text says easy then the number of squares is assigned to be 3 else it is assigned to be 6 this is the conditional ternary operator it is the equivalent of a conditional statement that would go like if this dot text content equal to equal to equal to easy then num squares equals 3 else num squares equals 6 this these 1 2 3 4 5 
these essentially four lines of code and this single line of code have the same meaning this one so instead of writing the entire if clause and the else clause we just check for the condition and perform the operation using the conditional operator now you must be wondering why we have a triple equal to while in a lot of languages we use a double equal to so in javascript as well we can use a double equal to also uh, what a triple equal to does is is a strict comparison that means uh, the things on the rhs and the left uh, left hand side of the operate the right hand side and the left hand side of the operator have to be the same have to have the same content same value and the same type if we use the double equal to operator or the double equals operator what it does is it just compares the values in a certain sense like if i compare 2 and 2.0 the double equal to operator will return true while the triple equal to operator will return false because 2 is an integer and 2.0 is a double precision decimal right so this is how we set up our mode buttons and so while initializing we set up our mode buttons we set up our squares and then we reset which is basically initializing the entire screen and yeah that's pretty much about it of what we're doing here in the code and this is the end result we've got the resetting bit and we're done and this is how it looks and oh wow well, i'm going to like maybe split screen between this and the live chat so that i can maybe we can play this game once or twice in the live chat and see what's happening see how that works where am i here yeah. sounds like a good idea let's see like a pro what is dom um dom is the document object model or what we see on there so oh this is it Yeah. Yeah. Those are also queries. Yeah. Query. Um, yeah. Mute your YouTube. Um, you just mute it there. Mhm. Mm so um, yeah. Now. looking at the queries that we had just before we start with this game one was what is dom and another query that we had is um from where can we learn advanced javascript in easy steps like progate uh simran you muted just check your mic yeah um sorry i had muted myself um so the two questions are from where you can learn advanced javascript and easy steps like progate um there's very few places that we can find such an easy and comprehensive platform like we do on progate but um you can try and refer to if you're a person that prefers reading and trying then you could uh, try free code camp where you'll find uh, a lot of resources to learn javascript and if you prefer video tutorials or maybe a hands on and video mix you can try out scrimba it's it's a really innovative thing where uh, you can actually alter the code of the uh, person presenting as well so you can try out scrimba you can try free code camp and also there's a youtube playlist of uh, cs50 that has uh, web development in javascript that as well you can refer to so yeah those would be the few suggestions that come to my mind right now and what is dom uh, dom is the document object model really uh, that's the full form and what what it does is it treats this entire document or our entire screen is our um is an html document essentially to start with right so it treats all of that as an object as a javascript object an object is a concept of an object oriented programming where uh, an object is an instance of a certain class so this entire thing and your entire document is treated as an object so we just we say our dom in short for our entire screen which uh, implies that we are referring to our document as an object as per the document object model 
that is what i can remember right now so yeah that's the answer to what dom is the full form is the document object model and we've got uh, yeah so if if anybody is up for playing the little game on the live chat we could try it out i mean we are we're numbering starting from top left to top right 1 to 6 and yeah what what do you think this color is going to be given the rgb value should we play the game have we got the time aditya we do have the we time so we can go ahead with that yeah so do you want to take a guess while everybody else in the chat is guessing it will all right so i mean it's got red and blue i guess the center one in the top row we numbering them 1 to 6 uh, from top left so like 1 2 3 i'd go with 2 probably oh that's any one else have any guesses yeah do mention them in the live chat yeah your guesses are supposed to be in the live chat i mean otherwise it will be just be another they're playing the game yeah we definitely don't want that we want to listen from you also please yeah do mention anybody okay let's just go with your guess Uh, Try again. <laughs> Now you'd say maybe the one next to it because it's lighter, but the same thing. I think yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like, uh, this is just a small little game which is good to build as a starter project. And yeah. And I mean, this gives you, this makes you very familiar with how the. how the basics of javascript on a web page work and then you can move forward to make something that is more utilitarian obviously this is fun to play when you uh, okay this is a personal hack that i may be sharing here uh, when you've got too many things going on and you just want to relax and you don't know what to do and you know playing games like even temple run gets a little it it requires effort this doesn't you just come here start clicking the wrong numbers the wrong squares and just start playing and just look at something that you've made on your own and it's just sort of really relaxing i find it really relaxing that is the only utility that i can think of for something like this but it's got i think it's got great value otherwise in terms of learning so that was all for today i i guess yeah that was all from my end from today i see another question on the live chat which says how did i start well i started with javascript or web development from a workshop in college i was lucky enough to attend a workshop within the first month in college where they uh, were giving us an introduction to html css and js so that was where uh, that was where i got the motivation to start and that was where i started web development progate if if somebody really wants to start with the basics i find progate to be one of the best places to go to not just saying because this is a progate event it really is we've got uh, you have uh, learning as well as hands on you can experiment in the hands on bit quite a lot so it's pretty comprehensive there as well yeah that's definitely yeah. um we have another one uh, vijay here mentions that he wants to become better in js So you know, once you're done with the fundamentals, how exactly do you grow from that point? I think you should first apply your fundamentals at least on three or four very small projects. Like we did the color game thing here. You can maybe try and implement um, what we do. Actually, I have organized the week of learning in my college. So what we do in week of learning is we. make a basic calculator using javascript that is one project that you can do just do three or four basic projects using your fundamental knowledge first and then see where you want to go you can move forward to working with react or uh, with you can go forward to working with react or angular you can pick up a framework but how do you better your javascript skills 
is by building, by practicing, like with any other skill. Just build small, small projects. Having your own calculator is a nice thing to have. When I first built the calculator, I felt very accomplished because we don't realize what goes into building a calculator. There's a lot of logic behind that that we've got to do. So it's fun. Build a calculator, build a to-do list, build a color picker maybe, or yeah, stuff like that, basic projects. I think that's great advice. Um, even apart from JavaScript, I would really go with any language, any technology that we're working on. Applying it, um, the whatever you've learned to small projects, I think that really helps develop our own skills. So that's great advice. Sure yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other queries also? I don't see any as of right now. All right, no worries. I mean, um, we'll definitely share our um, LinkedIn's and Twitter's in the yeah. live chat or the comments below, so you can contact us anytime. And uh, you have any issues you want to maybe tell me how I wasn't so great today, anything, just reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn. And yeah, we can talk. Our social will be shared. The feedback form mentioned here and we'll get back to you. Then. Yeah, the feedback is completely anonymous. So no yeah, hard feelings so there either. And we can get back to you regarding any queries uh, that you might have. Also, what you'd like to see in future learning jams since we're all stuck at home. Let us know. Definitely. You could mention that. Yeah. And apart from that, you know, I've also mentioned a link to the ProGate platform in the description. So if you want to try out and learn your uh, basic JavaScript, you know, work with su uh, such kind of stuff, you can definitely go over and check that out and actually mm -hmm. try hands on learning rather than just, you know, listening to the session. Um, try it out. I think that's going to benefit you all the most. That's the reason we had a quote. I wanted it to be a quote along during the session. And then I thought it was getting a little long. So still, we've, we've got, uh, you can find the code for the entire session on my GitHub repository as well and the slides. So you can do it in your own time. Try to do it maybe once again to get a feel of how it is and try build more projects and let us know, you know, when you build more smaller, simple, small, simple projects, just yeah, sure. The PPT will be shared uh, on my um, Sanchi. I'm answering to her question. Um, the PPT will be shared on my GitHub repository shortly. So um, whenever you build something small, a to-do or a calculator, be sure to share it on your socials and tag us. Let us know. We'd be really happy to know what you're, what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to know where you're working, how you're working, even if it's not JavaScript, if it's any other technology, yeah. say in Java, um, C Sharp, .NET, anything. If you're working on something, just let us know. We'd love to help out um, in whatever way we can. It's also as much a learning experience for us as it is for you. So definitely. Yeah. All right. So I mean, if we have any other, if we don't have any other queries, then I think we can um, conclude the session for now. Thanks a lot for joining us, Simran. I think it was a really informative um, session. And yeah, we look forward to hearing from you more often, definitely. In any way that I can help and work, work around here, I'd love to. Thanks a lot for having me. Thanks a ton. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.